So in this video, we're going to be learning about genetic algorithms. So genetic algorithms are typically used for searching and optimization problems. One example that we're going to use is we're going to search for a string. So here we have our target string and we have the initial string that we're starting with, which is called output, and it's going to be an empty string. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start from nothing and we're going to end up with this string. And we're going to search for the string by randomly choosing characters. And if we were to just generate random characters and hope that we find this string, it would take forever. But using a genetic algorithm, we can randomly generate characters and we can find this string that we're looking for much, much faster. So here is the algorithm in action. So you can see it took 38 generations for us to generate the target string. So if we scroll all the way to the top, you can see the first string that it tried was this set of random characters here. And the score it got was not 0.19, which means 19%. That means 19% of the characters in this string are in the correct place. So the second generation should be more accurate than the first. So if we look at that, the second generation is another random set of characters, but its score is slightly higher because it's got more characters in the right place. And if we keep going all the way down, you can see the score rises with every generation. You can see we've almost got the word high code there. And then finally we have high code. And then we've almost got the word subscribe. So a genetic algorithm is really is actually quite simple to implement. So when we start with this random string, we're not starting with one random string, we're generating 200 random strings of 21 characters long, which is why we have a population of 200. So the first thing we do is we create a population, in our case with 200 random strings, and we look at all those strings and see which characters are in the right place. Then out of this random population, we pick the top 10% of strings that have the highest score and we use that population to create the next population So each population has got more right characters than the last one So after we selected the top 10% we're going to do what's called crossover Which is where we take two strings from our top 10% Look at the characters in each of the two strings and we're going to pick the ones that are in the right place And we're going to use them in the next generation But if we only do that the child string won't have very much variation. So what we do at the end is we throw in what's called a mutation, which is where we loop over them all and there's a 1% chance that we will change one of them. So here you can see the mutation rate is 1%. So that means for every character, there's a 1% chance that we'll completely replace it with a random character. So we have a class called item and the item class is what we store in our population. So our population has 200 of these items and an item has a score and the score is how we determine whether it's the top 10% or the bottom 10% or wherever in the population. So the item stores the target string and it stores its own string and it stores its score and the score is simply calculated by looping over the string and looking at each character and if the character is in the right place we add one onto the score and then we divide the score by the length of the data just to convert it to a percentage. So to begin we set up our population by creating 200 random strings. And then we run a while loop. So essentially we run this loop until we get our target result. So the first thing we do in the loop is we do our selection. That's where we select the top 10% of our strings. So you can see what we do next is we pick two parents. So here what we do is we loop through our population and we pick two parents at random. Then what we do is we calculate the score of the first parent and the score of the second parent and we convert them to a percentage. So if parent A has a score of 60% and parent B has a score of 40%, that means we want the child to have 60% of its characters from parent A. So the way we do that, is we take the characters out of parent A and we multiply that by their score. That means when we use the Python function random choice, which picks a random character out of a list of characters, it's more likely to pick a character from parent A if parent A had a higher score. So that gives us the child's data. The next thing we do is we mutate the child, which means we go through the child's characters, which currently will just have data from parent A and parent B, and we randomly mutate a couple of the characters to throw in extra variation. So the mutation is up here at the top. This is the mutation rate. It's 1% or 0.01. So what we do is we generate a random number between 0 and 100 divided by the mutation rate, which would mean there's a 1 in 100 chance of a mutation occurring. If m was 0.02, there will be a 1 in 50 chance of the mutation occurring. And then what we do is we add the child to our data and we check if the child that was just created is equal to the output that we wanted. If it is, then we break. But after we've added the child string to our data array, all we do is we go back up here to our loop, we check if the output equals the target. If it doesn't, we have to keep going and keep generating. So we select another population, we pick two parents, we generate a child, we mutate the child, and we add the child back to the population. So if we need to create another generation, then we can. And what this code here does is it just goes through every generation and picks the best string. 
So that's what we see here from each generation. Each generation is going to have 200 strings that it's going to loop through. And we only want to see the best string out of every generation. So the best string in generation 3 had a score of 33%. And that's why we printed it out. And that's really all there is to a genetic algorithm. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. I'll put the source code of this video in a GitHub page in the video description. Don't forget to also check out the highcode.org website. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.